I don't know about you guys, but Christmas for us means lots of family time. Um, and so we try to play a lot of games and spend time together. Um, our table kind of becomes the center of all the Christmas enjoyment. Um, this year we actually have our tablecloth that can be colored. Um, and we've been slowly working on getting our gingerbread done. We have our, t our puzzle on the table. Um, it is currently rolled up in our puzzle mat, though, so that we could make cookies last night, um, decorate stockings, and then we're doing more cookies today. The Victorians were not so different from us when it came to spending time with family um, during the holidays and also playing games. Um, the difference is um, a lot of times how they are shown in TV and movies and Based on the history that we get taught about the time frame, um, we see very prim and proper people who were very reserved all the time. Um, however, that was not always the case. Um, a lot of times their parties um, got a little crazy and, you know, there ended up being some shenanigans. Um, and a lot of it was because there was drinking involved. Um, some of the Christmas games that they liked to play. Um, one game in particular, I am not brave enough to try. I don't know that I'll ever be brave enough to try. Um, and then they had games that they played throughout the year that they would sometimes play on Christmas. Um, one of the ones that they would play throughout the year was called Blind Man's Buff. And what you would do is you would pick one person, one guest, and you would put a blindfold on them. And while they were being spun, all of your other guests would purposefully move furniture and items into the walkways of the room. Once they were done being spun, you would leave the blindfold on. And it was their job to race through the house and find as many people as they could. While avoiding all of the furniture and things that had been put in the walkways. Um, so many people got hurt and injured playing this game um, that one of the, uh, a doctor in the countryside said that he believed that it had to have been created by a doctor um, just to increase business during this time of year. Um, you know, what doesn't say family fun like, you know, Uncle Joe tripping over an ottoman and breaking both of his arms? Um, Another game that they would play is close to one of our games, and it was called Command and Answer. Yeah, Command and Answer. I mean, it was kind of like our truth or dare. Um, the only difference is, is that if somebody failed to answer a question or follow a command, somebody would walk over to the fireplace, get a handful of soot, and blow it into their face. Um, a lot of people took part in this game, but some people looked down on it just because, you know, soot in your face, it's not very dignified. Um, the one game that was only played at Christmas, though, was a game called Snapdragon. And this is a game that I am not brave enough to play. Uh, maybe one day I'll become Victorian enough to play it. Um, I'm not sure, though. Um, and this game was actually played when you brought your um, plum pudding or Christmas pudding to the table. Um, theirs had a lot of alcohol in it, um, and so you would bring it to the table on a big platter, and you would put raisins all around the outside of the platter, and you would dump brandy all over your pudding and around the edges of the plate. Now, once the brandy was on the plate and on the pudding, you would light the plate on fire. All the adults sitting around the table would then proceed to start playing Snapdragon. Now, the whole premise of Snapdragon is to grab a flaming raisin off the platter. However, the next rule that follows is that you have to get that raisin in your mouth before the fire is out. Um, there are a lot of stories of people who, you know, women who had fabric that caught on fire or lace that caught on fire, um, men whose beards caught on fire. Um, and this was saved solely for Christmas. Um, I'm not sure that, um, you know, third degree burns on my face scream Christmas to me or family fun. Um, but that is what they did. Um, and I think this kind of history is fun because it makes them seem more human-like and not quite so dignified, um, and 
quiet all the time um, because I think that's how we see them. Um, you know, everybody from that time frame is very prim and proper. But then when you start to do the history and learn how they would cut loose and how they did things when they were partying, um, it makes you see them in a different light. I am definitely not Victorian enough to try most of these games, most of these games. Um, just because I don't, I don't need any broken limbs and I really don't need any facial burns. Um, what do you guys do at the holiday to spend time with family? Um, is there particular games that you do? Are there puzzles? Um, what do you do to find that, to spend that extra time with your family? Um, let me know in the comments. I'm really interested. Um, sometimes your guys' comments inspire us to do other things. Um, I had a comment about Christmas gifts and I talked to my husband about it and he read the comment. Um, and we're actually thinking about implementing it next year. So sometimes the comments that you guys leave for us actually influence us and give us ideas of things that we want to try. So I can't wait to hear how you guys spend extra time with family and have fun. And I'll see you in the next video.